Good evening, and thank you for coming out tonight to Gorilla Theaters 2001, the inaugural Dramatist Festival. This festival has been going on for approximately five years. Uh, we have plays submitted from all over the country, and we select the, the top plays and we tour them around to area coffee houses, a different play and a different coffee house every night. And you're helping decide the winner by being here tonight, based on your reaction to the play and the reaction of the other audiences to the other plays, and if your comments uh, emailed to us, which I'll explain after the show's over. Uh, we pick the winning plays, and then the top play will be produced in our following season. Uh, if you'd like to see this year's winner, it's Death as Usual, and it'll be playing tomorrow and Saturday night. And it's on the paper Death as Usual by Brandon Lee. Um, and tonight's performance is The Ritual by David Hansen. And David Hansen this year was our only local playwright that that was the top play. So congratulations to David for making the cut. Um, and you're about to see The Ritual at Death as Usual. Um. Uh, I'll be playing Harry Bishop. My name is Brian Colley. I'm uh, Roberta Von Fang, and I will be Gail. I'm Michael Hogue. I'm Mr. King over. I'm Patrick Keynes, and I will be George. I'm David Nickel, and I will be reading Max Step. I'm Nancy Nolan, and I'll be reading the part of Lydia Wontek. Dark stage. From below the stage, an eerie orange glow radiates. Five figures are silhouetted by the light from below. The shapes are human-like, but with large, flat heads. And all of the figures are the same, save for the one in the middle. The shadows cast are somewhat different. The Polynesian drums are heard pounding, and then cease instantly. The orange light fades slowly. The lights come up on the five figures. Two women, three men, all wear robes and large wooden masks. One of the men is wearing a particularly ornate mask and a fiery red, fiery red shawl. One by one, they remove their masks. Lydia Wontak, 27, beautiful but somewhat naive. She has long, flowing hair. Her eyes are wide with expectation. George I. George, a quiet man of undistinguishable features, very reserved. Gail Stone, 33, dark hair, looks somber, as if she's at a funeral. Max Stepp, 36, penetrating stare. He's a dominating figure. The man wearing the largest mask removes it. He is Lawrence Kingover, 50. He exudes confidence. Kingover looks over the faded light. Quite rejuvenating, isn't it? Someday it will be. Soon. Wow. Shall we? The five cross the boards with nails on which they hang their robes and masks. There's a special place for Kingover's garments. Curtains are drawn to hide the materials, and all sit down at a large meeting table, a chair for all the George who stands. On to new business. I sent the, the head others out looking for possible replacements for McNally. I believe I found them. You could have mentioned this to the rest of the board. At any time. I did that. Happy. Ecstatic. Fine. And, uh, Ms. Wontak, how do you feel about it? Fine, I guess. I thank you all for this vote of confidence. His name is Harry Bishop. He's bright, young, and recently sold his family manufacturing biz for a buttload. You're gonna love this kid. No corporate experience? This kid's no mini panty shield thin paper pusher. This is a hands-on doer. Really? I like him already. You get better, because he's gonna push your little keisters right into the ground if you don't shape up. I welcome the challenge. I knew you would. We still have to approve him, don't we? Yes, uh, sure. Whatever. First, I want you to meet him. Mr. George. Yes, sir. 
Show Mr. Bishop here. George Exit returns with Harry Bishop, a man of 35, trim and confident. Board, I'd like you to meet Mr. Harry Bishop. Now everybody go around and introduce yourself. This isn't summer camp, King Over. Make your shaman happy. The masks are put away, Lawrence. That's all right. I think I can handle this. Mr. Maxwell Stepp, senior VP, Ivy League, and reputed of having one of the best financial minds in the world. And Miss Gail Stone, educated in Big Ten, uh, also senior VP and fame negotiator with a killer addiction to chess. And you, of course, are Mr. Lawrence Kingover, founder of the company Incorporated. And this is Mr. George I. George, executive assistant for me. And finally, you are, uh, well, you are, oh, I'm sorry, but I can't place the face. Lydia Wontek, VP in charge of operations. It's okay. I don't make the papers much. Now, where's my office? In the, in the hall. Until after the vote. Oh, it hasn't taken place yet. No formality, mere formality. I'll be with you shortly. All right, Max, we'll take your vote. I want you all to remember who owns 25% of this company when your special projects are funding. Is that a threat? More of a reminder. I, I didn't mean to challenge the authority of the shaman. I was merely holding to company, or should I say tribal policy? Enough chit chat. Vote. Yes or no? Yes. 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 Now you can squibble among yourselves. I'm having lunch with the new chief. King over? Yes. I thought... I know. Uh, I'll discuss it with you later. Yes. So, what do you think of our new president? I mean, chieftain. I like him. You can't be serious. Deadly. I have a feeling Mr. Harry Bishop is the savior of the tribe. That was some lunch. Get used to it. The chieftain must learn to expect peace. Mr. Kingover, is there something I don't know? About? Chieftains, shamans, uh, masks. Oh, that. It's nothing, really. I'm a bit of a history nut, and I love those old stories of ancient tribal relationships. So in an effort to make corporate America a little more interesting, I changed the vernacular. After all, president. How does that really sound? Chieftain. Now that has something to it. A name with guts. Synonymous with power. Yeah. That's why I do. It's harmless, really, although some have protested to the use of the terms. Can you believe that? Who? Oh, just a few. It didn't hurt their job performance, but it made them a bit difficult to work with. McNally was that way. And just out of curiosity, where is McNally now? Bigger and better things, my boy. Bigger and better. So why don't you enjoy the fruits of your new title? The fruits? Enjoy. Mr. Kingover? Lydia? I want to be chieftain. Lydia, you don't want to be chieftain. You really don't. I really do. And you promised. There's no rational reason for this obsession of yours. I want the nameplate. I want the title. I want the power. Power? You want the power? Chieftains have no power. Yes, they do. Lydia, if you really want power, I can make you a, sh I can make you a shaman. A shaman has no power? Well, think about history. The shaman is the one figure who outlasts everyone in power. He is connected with the people, controlling their beliefs, their fears, their hopes. What he says, people treat as law. The chieftain has that. Yes, but only until things turn bad, till the harvest is poor. Till sickness wreaks havoc, or the tribe loses in a battle, and the chieftain is alone. The responsibility is his, and if the shaman says that a sacrifice is needed to restore prosperity, what can the chieftain do? But... Uh, no, Lydia. Choose wisely. Become a shaman. This has gone too far. Would you look at me? You're whining. Excuse me. Would you react the same way if you had to wear this? My legs wouldn't look so good. Shut up. Besides, what uh, choice do you have? I could quietly resign. Blame it on being repelled by the glass ceiling. Time Magazine might do a feature on me. Or... Or... You could wait and possibly become... more. More? Trust me. What are you saying? Get close to Bishop. Make him trust you. That's the key. 
It always is. You'll do it? Good. Max, why am I doing it? Very soon. Harry enters holding a long smoking robe out in front of him. George follows. What is it? A lounging robe, sir. What's it doing in my office? It is for your personal use. Personal use? I believe it is on your calendar, under stress management. Oh, so that's what that means. So what do I do with it? Wear it, sir. Well, I know that, but why? You'll see. George, would you like to join me for supper tonight? Why, sir? Well, we're going to be working long hours together. I'd like to know what makes you tick. I find it helps make a better working relationship. I will decline, sir. Decline? Why? I do not fraternize with my superiors. That's ridiculous. We're all on the same team. No, you are different. Because of my title? Yes. Well, that's the way you feel. Was well, there a reason for the rule? Survival. You are due for your stress management session. Oh, I've got the robe. Where do I go? This way, sir. Lydia and Gail enter both dressed in harem costumes. <laughs> you look great. So, you said you look great. It's a compliment. How long do you suppose we have to stay dressed like this? I've got a report to do. As long as he wants, just like the last time. One of these days, there is going to be a last time. Trust me. Are you breaking out of this joint? Please, I, I just think men have run this show long enough. I mean, really. Can you see them wearing this kind of thing? <laughs> well, stop it. You foolish, stupid... Stop! What? Stop making fun of me. Stop giving me material. I will not tolerate this from up here. <sighs> I think you're a little short for that. I would treat me better if I were you. Give me one good reason. Because I'm going to be chieftain someday, and then it'll be too late for you. When you're chieftain? It's going to happen. King over all but promised. Now that's the trick, isn't it? What? All but promised. That phrase could sum up my career twice. Mrs. Wontek, do you mind if I'm perfectly frank with you? I don't think so. Mr. Lawrence Kingover will never let you become chieftain. That's a lie. I've seen the way he looks at you. It means nothing. Grow up. How many chieftains have you seen? Seven. Each time he says the next time, right? Right. Seven is a lot of next time. He means it this time. I know it. Never. You know it's true. He wants you to be shaman or showgirl or whatever we are. <sighs> I... What? Face it, Wontek. The only way you can become chieftain is... To what? It doesn't matter. It does. Say things were to change. Say opportunities arose. Like what? Things. New things. If they did, would you be willing to side with a friend, Lydia? That's the first time you've ever called me by my first name. George enters, pushing a long, comfortable lounge. She places it in the center. There we are. George exits and brings back a plate of grapes for Gail and a large fan for Lydia. You know what to do. Come in. Harry enters, dressed in the robe. <laughs> Good to see both of you. Oh, great chieftain. Won't you recline your weary body on the lounge, oh great one? Gail feeds him grapes while Lydia fans him. How goes the eternal struggle? Oh, my cholesterol's down. I mean, the prosperity of the tribe. Well, as you know, we're just coming off some rough times, but things are looking up. Really? Oh yes, things are looking up. So, oh master of the roving eye, what did you do this morning? <laughs> well, I set up a charity. What? That was part of my agreement for coming on board. What kind of charity? Oh, you'll see the posters. Nobody mentioned this to me. Well, I don't want it too public. It's just something I do. Tax dodging. No. Come on. Oh, great and powerful one. No one gives without being it without it being a write-off. Well, this is different. <laughs> yeah, right. Whatever. It's called the Michael Fund, if you're really interested. I am. Well, I was visiting a friend in the hospital, and I took the wrong turn. It seems you never... You, you, whenever you get lost, you never know what you might find. Well, this time I walked into a children's ward, ward, and there he was, just sitting there looking out the window. So I asked him for directions, and he gave them to me, specific directions, like he'd been there several times. And I asked him how he knew the hospital so well. And he told me he lived there, or apparently he was going to die there. He had terminal cancer. He was very thin and very alone. His mother worked all day to pay what she could for his care, and his father, nobody knew. I own my own business, so I could kind of set my hours, and I made time for Michael. 
I'm not married. I have no kids. So I figured, what was a few hours a day? He was a smart kid, curious about things. Then one day, I bought about $1,000 worth of toys. I figured, if you're going to die, you might as well go out playing. And he looked at all the packages, came back at me, and you know what he said? He asked me to take everything back. He met this kid the other day, George. And George was in the earliest stages of a, a kind of cancer. George was very scared, and Michael, and here's this kid going to die, and all I can do is try to boost the courage of this George. So anyway, Michael asked me to return all the toys, put the money towards cancer research. Maybe it would make a difference for George. So that's what I did. Michael died the next week. George went into remission. So I promised myself that I'd make good on Michael's dream. Every year, off the top, I give money to the Michael Fund for research. Unfortunately, the guys who bought the company weren't terribly interested in that charity. We don't have any commercials on TV, so I made it a condition of my becoming president here. Is that a true story? Do you want to go to the hospital with me sometime? I... no. I don't really like hospitals. Maybe. If I get some extra time. Well, just let me know. You become interested. Where did they find you? At the sale of my company. I wanted something bigger, more challenging. These headhunters didn't waste any time. Pitched me on the idea an hour, hour after we closed. It figures. Mr. Bishop, your session is now over. Well, thank you. We'll have to do this again sometime. Don't worry. Just check your calendar. It's a pleasure. I will see you later. Do you believe that? I know. He didn't write it off. He isn't the normal fair. I'll say. Oh, let's go. I've got a meeting. I need to talk with you. Can I change? This is humiliating. Wait a minute. This better be good. Read this. What? It's a report on the financial condition on Ink Inc. Nothing special, except that they're carrying a little too much debt. That is what they want everyone to think. But I happen to know someone in the research department. Their new product, the X component, is worthless, a complete failure. The company will probably end up in bankruptcy. So you're connected. Go blow your own horn. You're not thinking. I've had enough this afternoon. What if I was to entice our new president into, say, acquiring such a property as Inc. Inc.? After all, that's what big-time company presidents, chieftains, do, right? But then it goes belly up, and we're left holding the bag. Not we. Him. Brilliant. So we have to get a new chieftain, and nothing changes. But what if I could arrange it so that Kinover is the one whose neck is on the line? That's impossible. No, it isn't. But I can't do it alone. If you fail? Then Bishop is out. Big deal. How? I want to know how. I can't tell you yet. You have a plan that will cause the downfall of our shaman, and you can't let me in on it? Not yet. I will, though. You can trust me. Count me out. I don't think so. You don't like this company, you don't like Kingover, yet you never leave. Why? That's my business. You're addicted to it, aren't you? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the corner office. I'm talking about big desks and leather chairs. I'm talking about power. You need it more than you need anything else. That doesn't mean I'm a fool. If you were, I wouldn't be asking for your help. So what if you do take out the shaman? Kingover's gone. Then what? Who becomes shaman? That is an entirely different matter. It is, isn't it? I can say that I would imagine that the position would be up for grabs for whoever could take it. You want me to help you so that we can fight over who is next shaman? How romantic. It's a better chance than King Arbor will ever give you. Either way, I'm screwed. Think it over. We'll talk tomorrow, all right? Don't worry, I'll find you. Right here, you won't be hard to miss, especially since you'll be dressed for a stress management session again. Isn't that right? That's right. I must say, you wear the position well. Hello. Hi. You look nice. I look ridiculous. At least that's what Miss Stone says. Miss Stone doesn't know everything. You used to think she did. You are mistaken. I don't think so. 
So what if I did? Miss Stone is a valuable friend to have. People need valuable friends. I know. I have a few myself. Like? I know. I suppose you were referring to King Over? He's a shaman. He is shaman. That makes him most powerful. For now. Shamans don't change. Who told you that? Mr. King Over. He got it partially right. Shamans don't change as often as chieftains, but they do change. They do? Did you think King Over would never leave? Never die? Yes. Shamans change. Trust me. The difference is, when they go, it's bloody. In fighting, pawns of both sides are crushed in the battle for control between the new and the old. The only way to survive the change is to be on the winning side. There are no fence riders in a power struggle, Lydia. You're either in or out. What do, you, what do you want me to say? He's getting on. Ask yourself, how many years does he have left? Lawrence Kingover is a great man, and I will not listen to you denigrate him. I... Shut up! Mr. Kingover is the best friend I have, and he's going to make me cheap at something. I wish you the best, then. Thank you! But just ask yourself one question. What happens to you if King Over is shaman the next time we need to choose a new chieftain? Miss Wontok, Mr. Bishop has requested something special for tomorrow's stress management session. Not me. That's not quite what he had in mind. Did you tell him about the new thing? I tried, sir, but I'm afraid I failed you. Well, keep trying. Now I'm going to go to the club. Care to join me? I respectfully decline. Oh, I forgot. You got that thing about not being social with people you work with for. Exactly. And why is that again? Survival. I don't understand that. Is no one me going to kill you? Let's just say I've experienced the reigns of many chieftains. If I had been foolish enough to get to know each one, well, I'm afraid that's just too many goodbyes. But it's not like they die, they just leave the company. You can always look them up. Whatever you say, Mr. Bishop. So in all these years, you've served this company. You have never gotten to know any of the presidents. Chieftains. Humans learn by trial and error, Mr. Bishop. I learned my lesson that way, too. That's ridiculous. Might I be so bold as to point out that you've only worked in a large corporation a short time? Yeah, but I ran a company. An entirely different kind of beast. It's business, isn't it? It's more than business. It is a world unto itself. A place of business, yes, but with the shadiness of government. People fighting over budgets, fighting over personnel, fighting. But I'm the chieftain. I know, and for a time you will be the most revered member of the society, but there is always an end. Not for me. I'll be here till I die. I'll get a better offer. How many former presidents of this company can you name? Why? Humor me. Well, there's McNally and... Mm -hmm. I don't know. If you give me some time, I can produce a list. They are not at the top of your memory? Why should they be? They once had your desk, your chair, your title, and yet no one remembers their names but me. Well, make me a list and have it on my desk within an hour. As you wish. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Even if you remembered all the names, it still doesn't matter, because no one else does. Well, hello, Miss Stone. Mr. Bishop, good day. Miss Stone, do you have a minute? I'm awfully busy. I know that. It's just that, uh... What? <laughs> I wanted to thank you for our session today. It was nice. Mr. Bishop, I don't have time for this. Does uh, anybody have time for conversation around here? Mm -hmm. Ever since I got here, I've been trying to find somebody, anybody, just to talk with. You know, human to human. It's during the business day. That's fair enough. How about dinner, then? Excuse me? Dinner, you know. It's a meal. You do eat, don't you? Of course. Well, then have dinner with me tonight. Mr. Bishop, I don't think that would be wise. Why? We're business associates, Mr. Bishop. It isn't normal. It's just a friendly meal. Why won't anybody get to know anybody around here? It isn't wise to confuse relationships with anything but business. Well, then you're only getting to know less than half a person. Not always. Come on, Gail. Miss Stone. Miss Stone, please. Don't bite. Why ask me? Ah, oh, you're smart. And you're... Cut the crap, Bishop. You want to have dinner with me tonight because of how I look in a stress management robe. You may be new, but I'm not. Okay, what do you want me to say? You don't look good in a stress management robe? Well, that would be a lie. And while I'm telling the truth, I might as well tell you that you're one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. 
And I also figure that you don't like the stress management sessions much. I can understand that. You haven't canceled them. How could I? It's the only chance I have for conversation in this whole company. You'd think people would want to take talk to the president, the uh, chief. It's just not so. It's the difference between the big time and the small time. Here there are no free conversations. Everything is negotiation. Really? Really. Well, that's the way it is. How about we make a deal? What kind of deal? It's pretty simple, really. You agree to have dinner with me, and this is the last week for stress management sessions. Not good enough. I think it is. If I go to dinner with you, no more stress management sessions. That's a pretty steep price. Are you worth it? We won't know until you complete the deal. How about you go to dinner with me, I'll even pay, and I get one more stress management session. You heard my offer. Yeah, and you heard my latest. I think I came down quite a ways. Don't you think you could be happy with my concessions? No. Oh, well, I'm sorry we can't do business with you then. See you tomorrow afternoon, and the next day, and the next. You're good, Bishop. <laughs> I try. Dinner. Tomorrow night. Well, oh, don't forget. Conversation. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bishop, just the man I've been looking for. Why? Nobody else is. <laughs> Sir, you've been on the job but only a short time. People just have to get used to you. Nah, I suppose you're right. But there is a way to speed up the process. How? You need to do something bold. Something big. Something to make everyone sit up and take notice that Harry Bishop is the new chieftain. Get out of his way. I'm not really that type of guy. Nonsense. You're a chieftain. You've got to get used to taking risks. Well, I, uh... Take a look at this folder. Complete breakdown of ink, ink. Just look at it, sir. What do you see? Decent business. Uh, maybe a bit too much debt. Look at the back page. Expected to release a new super project that will reinvent technology regarding interface materials. Nice press release. It's more than that. I have a connection. A lab assistant I pay a small sum to for information about production development. He has never been wrong in 10 years. He tells me this is a gold mine. It will blow the mind of the market. They are so far ahead of the competition. We're talking decades before anyone catches up. Decades of having a virtual monopoly. Do you know what kind of profits a monopoly can make? Well, the technology is so special. Why do we have a shot at it? The research is expensive. They happen to be strapped for cash. There's a balloon payment coming up on debt from some recent acquisitions. They can't make it. They are ours for the taking, Bishop. What is this interface, whatever? To do. I I don't really know, but the people who do assure me this is can't miss material. So why aren't you taking credit for it yourself? Corporations are funny places, Mr. Bishop. In some ways, they don't function under conventional rules. Sometimes it's better for some people, for other people, to take the credit. Ah, uh, second party owes the first. Yes. I'm not here to convince you that this is anything else but a favor to be collected on later. And what will I have to do for you? Something you probably won't want to do. I guess that settles it then. Goodbye. You're passing up a unique opportunity. People are talking, Mr. Bishop. Big fish in a small pond doesn't necessarily mean big fish in a big pond. People are asking themselves whether or not they made a mistake. Maybe he isn't up to the job. People like who? No names. First rule of corporations, never use real names. Let's just say someone with a vested interest in stress management sessions is not impressed. I'm a chieftain. I don't have to impress anybody. You don't, but you do have to gain respect. Without that, you can't function here. It's your decision. I will promise not to say a word if you decide to present this to the board. You can count on that. Members of the board, I have in my hand the key to the next 40 years of business. As you are all aware, the company has recently emerged from the time of darkness, despair, 
most people would assume that we would be timid, cautious, rebuilding slowly. Well, I don't believe that this is the character of this company. More than anything else, we need to make a statement to tell the world we are in control of our destiny, willing to take risks. I have in my hands Inc. Inc., a small company struggling to stay afloat, but with the technological boom just waiting to happen. They can't make the balloon payment. They're ours for the taking. This is the ground floor, ladies and gentlemen. How many times do you have an opportunity at the ground floor? Are you certain of your research? Yes. If they are on this threshold, why aren't there other sharks in the water? Well, there will be. I happen to have received some inside information from who? A reliable source in their development section. Really? Any other questions? Well, part of this document is the buying contract. I need to sign it once and to initiate and once after the deal is complete. For that to occur, I need a vote from the board. So be it. All in favor, raise your right hand. Miss Stone, is there something you'd like to say as to why you're voting no? I... I would just prefer a more cautious strategy of growth. Well, then the eyes have it. Congratulations, Harry. You know we had wondered whether or not you'd fit into the corporate game. But by God, you really showed me something today. Bunch? Oh, I'll catch up in a minute. I need to drop these papers off at my office. Since when are you cautious? Since we almost went bankrupt. He who hesitates is lost. Fools rush in. That was unexpected. Shouldn't have been. <coughs> if I remember correctly, you hate Kingover almost as much as I do. So? Why vote no? <coughs> Max, you set this deal up to fail. We both know that. I don't know how it's going to work, but this is all going to fall apart. And when it does, when you are poised to make your play for Shaman, I'll be there. I'll be remembered for voting against the fateful takeover. You almost jeopardized the whole deal. It would be easier if we worked together. Why? You're going to take out King Over sooner or later anyhow? I think I'd rather just let you do all the work, and I get all the spoils. I'm not that easily beat. You haven't played with me. Not head to head. I'm almost looking forward to it. That's a stupid wish. Will you promise me one thing? Depends. Stay out of it. You want to fight over who gets to be shaman? Fine. I don't care about that. This deal will get bloody. It's the nature of the game. We both know that. I'm asking you to do nothing. Don't get involved at all. Let everything run its natural course. Why would I do anything else? I don't know. Yet. Excellent speech, Mr. Bishop. Brilliant. Thank you. I owe you more than you know. Oh, hello. Hi. So you don't approve of my new aggressive business stance? No. I'm sorry. That's okay. Some of the fiercest arguments I ever had were over company policy. We had a rule there about leaving business as business, though. Do you have a rule like that here? Not really. Let's see. So I guess we're not going to dinner tomorrow night. I didn't say that. No, you didn't have to. Harry? It's all right. It's all right. I keep pretty good company by myself anyway. Look, there's no reason we can't have one dinner. Really? Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow night. Great presentation, Mr. Bishop. I was in... in awe. Well, thank you. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lunch with Mr. King over. Lydia, how good to see you. Hi. What's wrong? Nothing. Lydia, you can tell me. Yes. Mr. Bishop. Has he done anything to you? No, but you were in there, weren't you? You heard his speech. You heard what he plans to do. He's going to be here forever. He is not. What do you mean? Mr. Bishop should have been a little more cautious. You voted for that. Was it wrong? The board is never held responsible for such things, only the chieftain. I see. Are you? How long before I get my shot? Not long, if you're willing to do something for me. What? I promise it will not be difficult. In fact, it'll be the easiest thing you've ever done here. I don't know. 
I'm offering you a chance at being chieftain. You have to expect to do favors for people to achieve great heights. It's just the way the game is played. What's in it for you? We both know that King Over isn't going to let me be chieftain. If you do as I say, King Over won't be able to stop you. How? That's my problem. To get to that point, I need this favor from you. I shouldn't. Do you want to be chieftain or not? If you're going to lead this company, you've got to be able to make decisions. Or you can be vice president in charge of operations for the rest of your life. Tell me what to do. Max reaches into his pocket and pulls out a small bottle. I want you to pour this into a cup of wine and then serve it to Mr. Bishop at the next stress management session. Will it kill him? No, it won't. Trust me. To achieve greatness, you must be willing to do the hard thing. I will. I knew you would. Don't forget. Well, Lydia! How are you? I'm fine. I'm just fine. Have you seen Mr. Bishop? He, um, he went ahead to the club, I think. Are you all right? <laughs> Never better. You look a little pale. No, I'm just excited about the takeover. I know what you mean. This Bishop, I think he's going to be a great chieftain. So forceful, so purposeful, so willing to do whatever is necessary. Even if it is a little risky. Mm, so I've heard. I will see you later. Bye. Willing to do whatever is necessary. <coughs> How did lunch go with Mr. King over? Great. Marvelous. Absolutely grand. I have his full confidence, and he's arranging to have several of the trades do a feature on me. That is serious. Are you happy for me? Not particularly. Are you unhappy? Not particularly. So you don't care? Not particularly. Well, thank you for the list, list of names on my desk. It was a very thorough job. Thank you, sir. Why don't you take the afternoon off? What? Well, I know you're up all night working on them, and the next few weeks are going to be a long one. Why don't you take some time and just relax? I'm going to need you for the takeover. I don't want you to run you down before we do it. Really, sir? I don't require it. It's up to you, but the offer stands. <coughs> thank you, sir. Oh, hello. I can't tell you how much I hate this. I don't suppose you can. You wouldn't understand. I don't suppose I would. This is the last time. Remember that. That was the deal. George enters carrying a bottle of wine and a glass. He gives them to Gail. George exits as Lydia enters carrying grapes. I'm late. I'll pour. No, that's all right. I'll do it. Mr. Bishop, wouldn't you rather have Miss Stone feed you grapes? I, well... You've got the grapes. You feed him. But I'm sure he'd rather you do it. Well, to tell you, I have the treat. I have the wine. You have the grapes. So... Ladies, please. Because this is a special session, I would like it if Miss Stone fed me grapes. <laughs> Gail grabs the grapes and shoves the wine into Lydia's hand. She crosses over to Harry reluctantly. She plucks a grape and puts it into his hand. There. <laughs> Gail sees as she begins to feed Harry grapes. Lydia pours a glass of wine. She produces the vial of liquid. Gail notices what Lydia is doing. Lydia empties the vial into the glass and she brings it to Harry. Gail has stopped feeding Harry grapes. She is stunned. What's the matter? I'm hungry. How about some wine? Oh, I guess a little wine couldn't hurt. Now, this is living. Sir, I have a telephone call from Ink Ink. It sounds urgent. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something here? Uh, I did want to talk to you immediately. Okay, okay. Thank you both. What did you put into the wine? Excuse me? You heard me. I don't know what you're talking about. I want to know. There's nothing to know. Was it poison? I didn't do anything. I saw you. You think you did? Are you trying to kill him so you can be chieftain? Kill him? No, I would never do that. What would you do? I don't understand your concern for Mr. Bishop. He is the chieftain. Why, you're so loyal. Why didn't you stop me? That is, if you really saw anything. Nice place. I come here a lot. <laughs> what? That's nothing. I just thought you hated that outfit. I do. I just didn't have time to change before our appointment. Our dinner. 
Call it whatever. No, I won't. Gail, so how are you doing? How are things in your life? Why? <laughs> Just curious. So you can blackmail me? No, so I can get to know you better. I'd rather we didn't do that. Well, I'd rather we did. Is that an order from the chieftain? No. Just a plea from another human being. I'll take it into consideration. Not so often. I never said you were. Then relax. Have some fun. How's your charity coming? I'm fine. I'll go for a visit tomorrow. Oh, do you want to come? No. Would you like to dance? I don't know how. It's easy. Really, it is. Harry stands up and offers his hand to Gail. She accepts, and the two stand ready to dance. I, I don't think this is such a good idea. Maybe not, but at least I finally get to touch someone. Harry takes Gail in his arms, and they begin a slow foxtrot. Gail is at first standoffish. Gradually, she lets her guard down and finally puts her head on his shoulder, relishing human contact. Harry stops abruptly. He breaks contact. He is sweating, and he leans on the table for support. I don't feel so good. What is it? I don't know. His stomach. He falls into a heap on the floor. An ambulance! Somebody call an ambulance! It'll be okay. Um, Everything will turn out just fine. Don't leave me, please. I promise. Uh, I'll stay right here. Good. You're the only one I trust. Just rest. Ambulance lights flash brilliantly across the stage. All goes black. In the back corner. Take a little break. Okay, five minute break. <laughs> Yeah, it might be. Just get geared up. Let's fly. 
It's very comfy. I mean, yes. it's, it's very, very comfy. It's the homeiest coffee shop I've ever been in. Yeah. <laughs> Are we ready? Is that way? Okay, we're ready. Yay! Okay. We're excited. I'm on the edge of my seat. Hey! Uh, That's okay. Hurry! Yeah! I think I'm laughing. I can hear you. That's what I see. Oh, find the missing one. day, the table and chairs are only things displayed. Harry lies on the table as if it were in a hospital room. George stands nearby with gifts. Is he going to be all right? The doctors say he will, but they don't know how long it will take. They know it was poison? Inside they do. But this hospital is owned by bigger powers than any single man. What's that supposed to mean? It means that Mr. Bishop will recover, and it won't matter why he was here, will it? I don't know. It's time to go to the meeting. I call this meeting to order. As you know, for whatever reason to be determined later, our chief is lying in a hospital bed. At this time, he is unable to continue in his office. In consideration of these facts, 
I move that we suspend all activity until he recovers. Mr. King, however, may I point out that that would be disastrous? Why? The Ink Ink deal must be signed today. The second signature is needed to complete the merger. I'm sure they can wait. They can't. Big Consolidated and Holdings Limited are at this moment preparing a bid to snatch them away from us at the last minute. Did you tell them that our chieftain is in the hospital? I did, but, well, you know how image is, Mr. Kingover. What with last year's failures, Ink Ink is on the verge of having a lack of confidence in our ability to do deals. Well, they can just have their problems. Forbes, Fortune, and the Wall Street Journal all are considering articles on the jinxed company that can't pull off a simple merger. All three? All three. Due out tomorrow. What are our options? We need a temporary chieftain. Someone to assume the office until Bishop gets back on his feet. And if he doesn't recover? He will. I visited him in the hospital today. What did they say? Will there be a long time until there is sufficient recovery for him to return to his office? It's anybody's guess. That's why we need the temporary chieftain. Who did you have in mind? Wontop. No. Well, Mr. Kingover, I can do the job. Miss Wontop, it just isn't time for you yet. That's what you say every time. And every time I've meant it. I want this. No, you don't. I officially nominate Ms. Wontok for the post of temporary chieftain. Any seconds? I second. Wait a minute. I'm the only one who can call for nominations. Then do it. We'll vote and she'll be in. No, she won't. There are special company rules regarding the need for leadership under adverse conditions such as these. These rules allow for the shaman to take temporary control until the chieftain can return to his office. I officially invoke this rule. Um, then, Mr. Temporary Chieftain, Sign the merger. If you can't be chieftain, then open the floor and let Ms. Wontok show you how. King over glowers at Max. He signs the paper. Max slowly purposefully picks up the paper. I will call Ink Ink myself. What's the prognosis? He'll recover. The cause? Unknown. Officially a rare family disorder. My research didn't turn up any physical problems. Sometimes research is flawed. It isn't that big of a problem. Doctors estimate a week, maybe two. I want you to push his recovery. I'm not a doctor. Neither am I. But that doesn't mean there aren't ways to push. I suggest you find another button. Lydia, I need to talk with you. No, you don't. You don't He's understand. You don't want to be temporary chieftain. What kind of a title is that? When Bishop gets better, he comes back, then you're out again. What if he doesn't come back? What do you mean? You heard, Miss Depp. Doctors make mistakes. This has gotten out of hand, Lydia. Listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. Chieftain is not what you should aspire to. I'll tell you what. I'll let you be temporary shaman. That is not what I want. Can't you understand what I'm offering to you? Step and Stone would kill to be shaman. I don't care. You're a fool, Miss Wontak. A fool. That's how you feel. Don't knock on my office door when you just want to chat. I'd hate to be wasting your time. Fine. Go to hell. Not in your lifetime. In fact, I'm feeling very stressed at the moment. George? <laughs> George, blast him. Prepare Miss Wontak for a stress management session. If I have to be chieftain, I'm going to enjoy myself. And you will provide that enjoyment. Is he mad? Yes. Don't worry. You're feeling bad about this. Have you ever done something like this before? No. It's not pleasant the first time. I know. But you get used to it. See how. Trust me, you will. Was it, like, was it like this the first time you played this game? Well, no. I have always been blessed with understanding the game, the rules, and the cost. Still, I can see how it might worry someone else. He wants a stress management session. He is the chief. Things will be different when I get home. I'm sure they will be. It might be worth it just to see you in a stress management session. 
There's only one way to find out. George Henry is carrying a silk robe. Mr. George I. George, is that for you? It is. He's going to relieve a little stress? He is chief then. You've seen enough of them. George, who are you loyal to? My position. And you are indifferent to all else? Indifference is my greatest asset. <laughs> oh, George. There you are. As I always am. George, I've got to ask you a question. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't done this before. <clears throat> what? Or rather, are there any particular rituals to this activity? In what way, sir? You know. Do I do anything in particular or, or say anything? You know. I don't believe there is a standard protocol for this particular activity, other than the participant chooses pleasure over all else. Is everything ready? Mr. Stone hasn't returned to the office yet. I expect her shortly. Well then, Pager, Beaver, do something. I'm ready now. I can't stay long. That's okay. Are you... Are you all right? No. I can't feel my legs. Would you get me that wheelchair? <laughs> they ever choose a wheelchair from just off the Thanks. <laughs> it's nice to be mobile again. Hospital beds must be very... They are. So how long do you have to use that? Uh, probably forever. My system didn't take the poison well. At least that's what the doctor says. Seems odd that a body doesn't take poison well. It does. You look like you shouldn't be out. Why are you wearing that? Kingover is having a stress management session. I thought only chieftains had that. He's acting chieftain until you get back. I see. I guess that's good. I guess. It's a pity he gets to see you like that. <laughs> Don't be so romantic, Harry. You weren't the first to see me like this, either. A man can have his delusions, can he? A man certainly can. So is this an extended stress management session? I don't know. No, I'm feeling a whole lot better. Maybe I should come back today. <laughs> the doctors say you shouldn't. The doctors are cautious. I'm not. That's nice of you to say. No. I want you to know... No! Don't go one word farther. I don't even know what I'm going to say. Yes, I do. Something fragile, something delicate, something powerful. And always, always something with a butt at the end of a clause to hedge against the futures market. It's not me. It was... It is someone. That's all that's important. <laughs> It's the office. I've got to go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Enter King over like a pig in fresh slop who lies <laughs> on the table waiting. Lydia enters with a tray of grapes. She starts feeding King over. George enters and gives Gail a large fan. Oh, Miss Stone, where have you been? A meeting. I'm sorry it ran long. Come over here. Uh, Lydia, I've had enough grapes. Would you rub my shoulders? I would love to. That's nice. You know, there are people in this company who want to see me taken out, replaced. What do you think, Lydia? I just work here. Oh, no one just works here. There wouldn't be a point to any of it. We all just work here. It's the rush of playing the game, of wearing the clothes, of making the money. People will do almost anything to win. The problem is the game never ends. Each victory just means you start playing again immediately. No time to celebrate. No time to bask in your own glory. No time for the other things. That will be all, Miss Stone. I don't need you anymore. Sir, I... That will be all. I have worked for this company for a very long time. I've made Never once in my whole career did I ever ask for anything back. Nothing more than my salary and my power. I want something more. I want what this company owes me. Mr. Kingover, the news! 
<laughs> this better be good. It isn't. King Arrow reaches into his robe and produces remote control. He presses the button. The three are bathed in blue light given off by televisions. Today, Inc. Inc. called the hasty press conference amid new claims by a recently fired engineer that was project head for the new interface materials division that current reports about the readiness of this new technology are false. The product has been termed a complete failure in testing and probably, probably will be abandoned by the company. Due to this news, Inc. Inc. stocks fell sharply. Mr. George, call a special board meeting. Everyone is required to attend. Mr. King, I'll Save it! When I find out who tried this little stunt, heads will roll! Did you see the news? Yes. Confidence in the company has been shaken. I've already had a few calls from raiders looking to exploit fear. That's nice. It's my play, Gail. Mine alone. What you do is your own business. I want you to stay away. Sorry. If you test me and lose, I guarantee it will mean more than just the game. I will make your life a living hell. You've got to win first. <sighs> All right, you bunch of carry-ons. Who's the vulture trying to eat my spleen? Answer me! Lawrence, don't upset yourself. At your age, it could mean a heart attack. Shut up about my age. You act like I'm feeble. Right now, you are. I suppose that everyone has heard the reports from Ink Ink. I think everyone has. It's front page stuff. The company is in big trouble this time, Larry. It's Mr. King over to you, sir. I don't think so, Chieftain. So that's it. You think you can get me on a technicality with the second signature? Not a chance. But I believe it was the second signature that enacted the deal. That contract had to be signed by the chieftain, acting or otherwise. You shoulder the blame. That's ridiculous. Bishop made the deal. You voted for it. You were behind it. It was important enough for you to sign it. This is on your head. I am the shaman. You cannot do this to me. You are the chieftain. You have a responsibility to make the company prosperous again. No, I won't go. I think we'll vote on that. All in favor- You will stop this now! Would you rather face the shareholders and explain the contract? I- All in favor of making the sacrifice, raise your hand. It's a tie. Not quite. Lydia, have you voted yet? I haven't. What do you mean? This is much harder than I imagined, Mr. Stone. You said you got used to it. You were in on this, Lydia? This is more than just a deal. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be worth the game. I... All the broken promises, Lydia. If he survives, when will you get to be chieftain? When? If he carries on, what guarantee do you have that you won't want more stress management sessions? Do you want to spend the next 10 years waiting on him hand and foot? Or do you want to be leading the company? It's up to you. Lydia, I want- I vote yes! You. King over charges Max, who holds out his contract in front of himself. King over stops, as if an invisible wall has sprung up between them. You are legally bound. No. Max signals to George, who has the masks lowered. Orange light returns. Max runs to the great mask of the shaman but it will not come off the rack. Sorry, Max. No one can touch the mask of the shaman until he is gone. Let's go, then. <laughs> I'm enjoying seeing you grasp for what you can have. You can wait all you want, but eventually you must go. If you want it so badly, make me. Or aren't you man enough? I've waited a long time for this. <laughs> Shut up, old man. I can't help it. What's so funny? <laughs> you may be many things, Maxwell Stone, but you are no shot. Laughing, King over steps away from Max and throws himself into the light and disappears. Max spins to see the mask is now free, and Gale holds it. Behold the shaman! That's mine! No. I will take it! I will go to the shareholders! And tell them what? You voted for Ink Ink. You made the deal in the first place. I can prove it. What do you think the esteemed shareholders would do then? I... 
Lydia, side with me. Together, we can rule the company. Lydia, you know I'll make you chieftain. With three left on the board, it takes only two votes. You've got mine, and you've got yours. You're chieftain. I am. We have to vote. Then vote, Max. But we both know it doesn't matter. Stop. Harry? Harry? The ink ink deal. It's my fault. I accept full blame. Where's Mr. King over? He's already taken his share of the blame. You set him up. I did. I also set you up. I know. Stone, what are you talking about? There are two signatures on this contract, Ms. Stepp. Two culprits who must pay. King Ober already took the fall. And we already elected a new chieftain. If Harry's not at fault, then we have two chieftains, and one of them has to go. Why do you need more? Mr. Bishop's name was on the contract. He did bring it up in the board meeting. I'm afraid he will have to go. The company will buy out his contract and will not stand in the way of his finding another appointment. Yeah. I'm sorry. So am I, Harry. You see, it's not that simple. I have a contract here which proves your guilt in bringing the company to its present debacle. Everyone in this room knows the penalty for such actions. Even you, Ms. Stepp. If you can't pronounce sentence on him, then I'll get the shareholders to take a hard look at the leadership qualities of the new shaman. Mr. Harry Bishop, I'm afraid that contracts are binding. I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. I'm supposed to die because one bad deal fell through? Are all of you crazy? Harry starts to roll away. Max produces a contract and holds it in front of Harry. Harry stops. And can't believe What's happening? You're about to get a taste of real power. Max grabs the wheelchair from behind. He wheels Harry to the edge of the orange light. No! We are ready then, except for the deal. The deal? I'm a reasonable man. I'll trade you Harry's rightful punishment for the position of shaman. Max, this is... <laughs> How much is he worth to you? Is he worth the power? The dream? Is he? I'm sorry, Harry. <laughs> then it ends. Will it be painful? Everything is painful, Harry. Haven't you realized that yet? Max dumps Harry into the light. I will be shaman soon. George, the masks. All the masks are returned to the racks. Lydia, would you like to dine with me? I don't. I don't feel like eating. Then a drink? Maybe tomorrow. Then tomorrow it is. Miss Wontak, remember what happened here. Remember who plotted it all out. Remember all of this tomorrow. I congratulate you. I didn't think you could do it. I don't want to talk about it. I understand. Oh. By the way, it seems I got lost the other day when I was supposed to deliver this contract to Ink Ink. They never signed it. Funny that. I guess the merger never happened. Just shows you how serious everyone can take a rumor of a merger. It's a good thing, though, considering how everything worked out. You can say that I saved the company millions. Sleep well. Gail steps forward to the edge of the light. All goes dark, except for the orange glow, until all we see is Gail's face, lit from below by orange light. The end. Thank you all very much for coming. Uh, and I forgot to mention that this year we've been graced with a grant from the Missouri Arts Council to help keep this on. And uh, but your donations are most welcome to help keep us afloat and keep producing this year after year. And if you'd like to, please email us your comments at apes a p e s at gorilla theater dot o r g, or give us a call at eight one six four seven one. 
2737, 47-APES. And please let us know your comments. That'll help us in deciding the winner of this festival. And uh, we have, because of a cancellation, we are going to do uh, Die for One with Lobster again next Tuesday because we canceled it because of the events last week. Um, so we will be doing that show again at Planet Cafe. Uh, for more information, give us a call on that. Uh, and please try tomorrow and Saturday to see Death as Usual last week. Again, thank you very much for coming. And I hope to see you again at another Grand Theater Thank you. Oh, I'm going to go to the hospital.
Yeah. 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 Ye